business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high quality website, blog, or online portfolio. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use offer code FRAMERATE10. And by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker who needs stock video clips, photos, illustrations, music tracks, or sound effects, check out Pond5 for instant downloads at the best prices anywhere. Sustain that. You started early. <laughs> I was just like, I hope you brought a big no, breath Tom, in. Don't do that. <laughs> You'll you never can't survive. sustain the frame rate. <laughs> I got a frame rate episode 98. I'm Tom Barry. Howdy, folks. I'm Brian Brushwood. And that was, you got a guess? You know. Well, but I mean, no. I'm, I'm speaking rhetorically. Okay, if I had a guess, to, to I would our guess audio that was listening. Justin Robert Young. That's it. That is. That's my co host <laughs> on NSFW, Justin Robert Young. Mimicking human speech. Uh, no, that was on IO9. This is our tribute to audio listeners. Yeah, audio listeners, uh, frame rate, we very much appreciate you, but we know that our cold open videos at the start of every show often leave you cold because uh, you can't see what's going on. And sometimes there's no real audio to make it clear. So to fix this, we gave a totally nonsensical sound effect that will do nothing but confuse you and leave you cold. <laughs> but it was only audio. You weren't missing any video except the waveform on SoundCloud. That clearly was labeled that this was a beluga whale mimicking human speech. Somehow I think this is the worst tribute to audio listeners All we the possibly audio could have done. listeners are like, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. Amazing. Ah, uh, let's start off with the big story. This just in, the big story. Of course, Frame Rate, uh, for those of you who've made it this far and don't already know, is a show all about cord cutting and watching the video you want to watch, where you want to watch it, legally, uh, whenever you want to watch it. Big deal for a lot of people in our audience was AMC disappearing from Dish because there was a lot of cord cutting encouragement going oh, was, on. Was, was AMC not on Dish? Man, if only I'd known. If only they'd if ran only they'd ads loudly and, and very like, nastily yeah. associated their brain with a giant, their brand with a with the giant screw dish movement. Well, guess what? As of yesterday, on Sunday, uh, Dish Network fans suddenly found AMC back. Not all of the AMC family of networks are back yet. Sundance uh, and some of the other channels aren't coming until November first. But AMC was back just in time for Walking Dead last night. Yeah, and they got a pretty penny too. Seven hundred million dollars paid out. And uh, I guess I guess the debate was Dish said that uh, AMC was being babies, asking for too much money. Uh, AMC said, "Nah, uh you guys were just being jerks because uh, you canceled." Uh, was it? Boom? Yeah. Cablevision, which used to own AMC, was suing Dish way back in 2008. It's still been going on over uh, Voom. Voom was an HD satellite service that Dish bought, and then Dish got rid of a bunch of channels, breaching, at least Cablevision said, a 15-year contract to offer these channels to its customers. Uh, AMC, as part of this suit, was seeking $2.4 billion in damages. Wow. So the trial, which had been in New York State Supreme Court, was settled. And that's it. We don't actually know the terms of the settlement, or at least I haven't been able to find them. But the judge said, good news. It's all settled. There won't, the case can be dropped. We don't have to be here anymore. And so I'm sure we can expect uh, AMC to run promos about how much they love Dish now. They're like, now they'll bought Dish, our best friends, who we totally love. <laughs> it's coincidence that they actually settled the other totally unrelated case and agreed that 
you know, $700 million doesn't seem like that much money to pay for AMC yeah, and Sundance how, how and independent film How big a deal was this? Channel. I mean, I have, uh, Dish is not exactly the biggest provider. Uh, I mean, was this was this a case where, I, I don't know, I just, obviously we're totally on the outside, so all we could do is speculate wildly about what, uh, what this actually means. You know, I don't think this ever threatened to cause any ripples throughout the rest of the market. I mean, I think it was easy for us to look at it and go, well... You know, if Dish can go it without AMC, this could break the market and bring down prices. And and, and if AMC were to take and uh, put all their shows direct online, it, it could start a movement of channels putting their stuff direct instead of going through Dish. But I think the industry wasn't worried because they knew this actually hinged on the Voom lawsuit. Right. Uh, and no, nobody was saying that. But the fact that as soon as they figured out the Voom lawsuit, however they figured it out, right. $700 million was suddenly a fine price to pay for AMC means that that's all it was ever about. And this was a, this was a lot of legal manipulation. And nobody thought it was ever, that there was ever going to be any other res- resolution than what we got. Uh, man, I wish I, I didn't do any research, but I wonder what they, uh, uh, what they were offering for, or getting offered from Dish for uh, for their service. I wonder how big a gap this seven hundred million is from what they were offering. But I think they wanted it, it free. Really? Dish was like, just give it to us. <laughs> we'll pay. Like, we'll right. pay to take it. Well, or you could pay us to take it off well, your hands. Tech TV had to pay to get carriage. Really? And that was that's not uncommon. Oh, uh, that's right. Well, because it, because you need to be in a certain number of homes out there in order to attract a certain level of uh, in order to even be. Uh, counted on the Nielsen That was one of the reasons Tech TV was being sold was because they didn't have any other channels, so they couldn't get any leverage. Uh, And and it was costing way too much to pay for carriage. Uh, And and they did have some agreements where they got paid for carriage, but but mostly they were just making all their money off ads and, and paying for carriage. And they needed a Sony or a Fox or a Comcast to come along and say, well, we'll package you in with other channels so right. that you can actually get carriage. Man, what a weird business. And instead, Comcast said, what we'll do to get you carriage is close you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess, on, and with that, <laughs> another big, it's time for another big story. Stop everything. It's another big story. The Consumer Electronics Association announced uh, last week that Resolutions of 3,840 pixels horizontally and at least 2,160 would be called Ultra HD. That is the official name so that we have HD and it's 720 and 1080 variations. And then any 4K, uh, because 4K doesn't, you know, it can can be confusing for for the masses. We'll call it Ultra HD. And Sony said, that's great. We love that the CEA is doing this. We're going to keep calling it 4K. This is the problem, right? When you want to name things, if, you, if you're if you going to try to to own uh, a name of something, uh, the name has to offer some kind of tangible benefit to consumers to use instead of the numbers, you know, because uh, take HD, right? The fact that, that HD, I could say it's an HD signal, and the first thing you're going to ask is like, well, 720p or 1080p, right? So it's, it's like HD itself doesn't even mean anything. Now you're going to give us ultra high definitions, and of course, you know, they, they say that this is, it has to be a range of at least this many pixels, at least that many pixels. First thing you're going to say is like, well, is it 4K or is it 8K? Yeah, and I actually read an email from somebody, I think it was to TNT, saying, I hate this because, because of what you're saying with HD, it's like I have to ask well, which HD? Is it HD 1080? Is it HD 720? What are we talking about here? And with 4K, the nice thing is you know it's 4K. Yes, it is exactly, That's exactly 4K what pixels. It is. Yes, exactly. Uh, and it's kind of like 4G and 4G LTE. I think what Sony's saying is like, hey, Ultra HD is going to get watered down. It's going to become meaningless. And so we're going to keep calling ours 4K because our TVs will actually be 4K. Now, I would say that the difference on this is I wouldn't mind, and you've heard me say this before, uh, if you want to push a, a functionality uh, with the branding of it, then go ahead and, and call it something, you know, like, like, you know, a, a vid wall or whatever, you know, define this, this consumer device as being something besides a television with slightly more pickle, pix, pick, pickles. <laughs> I <laughs> hope it doesn't get involved in pickles either, pixels. because that would be absurd. And I have no idea why there are pickles in my television. <laughs> I hate pickles. <laughs> <laughs> Mega pickles. <laughs> Yeah, mega pickles. <laughs> it's a superhero. Uh, yeah, no, I, this this kind of naming stuff, it's easy to dismiss and say, well, this is just silly. It's stupid. I am a smart consumer. When I go to buy a television, I'm going to look at the resolution and the specs. But a lot of people don't do that because they're not that into it. They right. just want a nice TV. And so they go like, is it HD? That's all I care about. Well, and again, I, I think it's terrible that they're trying to push this on the consumer side of things. When I see 
that resolution, I immediately get excited about using it as a primary display for my computer. I get excited about the real estate. I get excited about the last thing if I would use this thing for is to stick it in the living room and then stand back 30 feet from it while I watch, you know, the Super Bowl or whatever. I kind of I kind of think that 4K is a better name and I know that it doesn't sound like HD. I know what the idea is. I get what the CEA is saying, it's two which syllables. is eight, everybody knows what HD is. So if we call it Ultra HD, then they'll say, "Oh, it's HD but better." And that is what it is. But 4K has some currency. Oh, absolutely. People here, for, oh, 4K, that's what the movie people are exactly. using. Exactly. And so I feel like that's a better brand name, A, because it has the splash of, ooh, 4K, that's what I heard the movie people use. Right. And it's accurate. It actually gives you information, which Ultra HD doesn't. Now, why on earth, uh, do you think this is busy work? Because it's a consortium that, that decided on this name, right? Well, it's a Consumer Electronics Association. Those are the folks that put on CES. So, okay. you know, I mean, they're... They're, they're good at this sort of thing, and I think they're responding to the industry saying, let's all agree on a name uh, that, that works for the masses, because some you know of Actually, them disagree with me and say, no, 4K isn't catching on with the mainstream, and we need a name that's clearer. It could be that the reason they want to go with a nebulous name like Ultra High Definition is in order to allow... Uh, displays that aren't 4k or maybe less than 4k it gives some... them a little wiggle room exactly yeah, exactly um I, I think you're right i think we have yet another big story oh yeah we do <laughs> It was all packaged and ready to go wow. who knew Tuck in your bootstraps it's yet another I'm here big for you guys. story thanks man it's good to, good to know you have our back <laughs> Jason, we, Jason we, ought to, we ought to name that guy. <laughs> no, I'm not Jason. I'm talking about the guy who's the <laughs> announcer. Like, we should, Jason? Like, yeah. a name. <laughs> yeah. His name's Jason, right? You've met him. <laughs> uh, okay, so the consumerist has a story about a reader named Rebecca who found out the hard way that when she purchased Puss in Boots, the movie, for $14.99, she didn't purchase all the ways to watch it. Now, when you purchase a movie from Amazon, the idea is that you download that movie, but as an extra perk, Amazon says, hey, we're even cooler than that. You don't just download it like iTunes. You have access to it in the cloud forever. It's up there all, anywhere. You got a net connection that plays Flash. You can watch your movie. And so Rebecca was relying on that. Recently, she went to watch Puss in Boots, and uh, I guess her kid really likes the movie. I don't know. Sure. Uh, uh, and by the way, that's redundant. Whenever you have a kid and you buy a movie, you're going to watch that movie a times. billion exactly. freaking times. Yeah. So she went to watch it, and it said, oh, we're sorry. This video is currently unavailable. It may come back later once the restriction ends. Availability of videos for purchase, redownload, or access from a backup copy is determined by the owners of the content. On very rare occasions, a video you re previously purchased may become unavailable. Now, this isn't so bad that any downloaded copies she had stopped working. If she had downloaded it, it still worked. Right. But it said, you can't stream it. Because my guess is, and this is what the consumerist thinks too, it ran afoul of a licensing restriction. Somebody, be it a Netflix or an HBO or an airplane on demand, said we have the rights to have Puss in Boots streamed on demand right. and only us. And Amazon, you can't stream it on demand right now. Well, and that, the problem is, of course, that in and of itself, you know, it's up to them. If they don't want to make stuff available one way or the other, then they don't have to. But the problem is, is when you make that part of the sales pitch and you make that one of the benefits, you know, it's like if uh, if uh, the Steam service, you know, platform based on get all your games, you know, save your games up in the cloud and have it available all the time. If all of a sudden they're like, ah, you know, for the next, for the next month or so, if you don't have, you know, Left 4 Dead 2 already downloaded, you're just going to just gonna have to wait. Sorry. It's just, it's just yeah. a business. It's United crazy. Airlines has an exclusive on Left 4 Dead 2 right now, right. so you can't... Yeah, no, it's... I think what, what happens here is Amazon looks at it as a good bet to say not that many people are going to rely on the streaming version. Mm -hmm. They're going to download it. Uh, they're going to download it on their Kindle Fire or their Android device or whatever. Uh, and not that many people who download who don't download it are going to want to stream a movie that is restricted because most of our movies are available most of the time. So the incidence of this happen is very rare. And I'm sure that's what Amazon's going to say in response to this is, yes, on very rare occasions, this sort of thing can happen, but it's, it's not the, the norm and, and she will get access to this again. Right. But it, it is sort of the fact is, hey, we're living in the cloud, right? Yeah. And maybe when you launched this service, the ability to stream it online was this fancy new thing you could do on your laptop and it's just a perk right. and not the main way. But more people are doing it this way. In fact, on your Google TV, my way to watch Amazon video is this. Right. So suddenly you're saying, oh, you purchased something, but you don't have all the rights to it. And that is always the problem with DRM 
and the and this idea that you're renting because you don't think of it that way. They don't market it that way. They say you own it, but you don't. Right. Correct. And uh, I'll tell you what it's so amazing. And we've talked about this before. So much of what we cover on frame rate are echoes of what happened exactly a decade ago in the music business. And that's in uh, as much what as shock. Yeah, well, exactly. But but what's funny is to see how all of these companies uh, refuse to acknowledge that possibility or that that's the case. And so well, they, they all look at the stats and very logically go, well, the chances of that happening very often are very slim. Right. And that was true in music, too. But yes. it happened enough that people like said, you know what? If I didn't have any alternative, then I wouldn't. I guess I'd live with it. Right. But I do. Well, and again, this is like the shining beacon of sanity. For as stupid as stuff as this is, uh, we already saw these roadblocks and these hiccups in the music business, and now we're entering the golden age of Spotify, and you really can get just about anything you want uh, at any time uh, for a very, very small fee. Uh, I, I mean, how? If you, this is my favorite thing to do, is make you speculate. How many years from now would you say that there's some kind of single access fee that you pay to some provider, and then you're able to get essentially, we'll say, effectively, any video of any performance of anything you wanted on any, on any show? Seven. Seven years? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Seven years? How many months? Two. Okay. I, I think that, uh, I, I'm making that number up, obviously, but I think it's going to take longer in video because in music, they didn't have the windowing system to fight through. Right. And they didn't have quite as, as much writing on each individual piece, right? Right. Uh, so if somebody buys a song, they buy it for 99 cents, they listen to it over and over and over again. Right, right? So, the, so they want that ability, they run up against those restrictions faster, right? What's happening here is somebody has bought a kid's movie and kids want to watch movies over and over again, so they're running into the DRM restriction just like music ran into it. It's going to take longer because people don't watch video as often and because each piece of video is worth more, Right. it's going to take longer for A, the restrictions to run, get run up against by the consumers and the consumers starting to have a backlash and B, the video industry to actually be willing to compromise because so much more is riding on each piece. Right. Then they're like, well, it's only 99 cents a piece anyway. So if we give a Spotify $25 a month, I guess it washes out. What would be a fair price for a video version of Spotify? What would you pay? I would pay $30 a month. That's if it? It, it? If it had, if it had like, you know, a decent selection. Oh, see, I'd, I'd, pay, I'd pay $100 a month. I'm already paying $100 well, a month that's just right. to get stupid I, I, cable. I want to save a lot more money than that. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm, All right. you know, I just want no, the convenience. I, you know, it's funny because you went from like, what am I paying for cable? And I'll come down a little bit. Yeah. I went from, what am I paying for Netflix? And I'll go way up. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So I went like, oh, at eight dollars a month. Well, if you give me everything, I'll pay five times that. <laughs> five whole times. Yeah, yeah no, this is true. So maybe seventy, fifty. Yes, fifty. Yeah, sold. Done. That's. I pull out a cardboard box and I'll act out anything you want. All right, this is probably not such a big story, but it is our fourth big story. I like this. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to mention this guest article on All Things D called A New Era in Television by Daniel Leff. He's a venture partner at Globespan Capital Partners. There's not anything in this article that most frame rate diehards don't already know, but I thought it was a, just a very well-written and, and, and pretty comprehensive survey of the state of things in online you know, TV. You know what these are? This is this is your new pamphlet that you send out to yeah. uh, family members who you try to explain what's happening with online video. This is it's very succinct, very well spoken, and it uh, I think it's right on the money as far as some of the projections it makes. Because you know it talks about how you know our our parents grew up in broadcast television, and uh, the rules completely changed when we grew up with cable television. And now you know my kids uh, really I, I don't I don't even know that Penelope really understands where the video comes from. Uh -huh. she, and, and it's like when you explain, well, it's, just, it's not available right now, windowed, or, you know. It's, or, She's like, what? Yes, that doesn't make exactly, any sense. Exactly, yeah. right? Out of the mouths of babes. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, he goes through uh, the pay TV subscriber uh, services like cable and satellite, what's changing there. He talks about the over-the-top uh, companies, uh, the, the device makers like Roku and Apple. Uh, he talks about the services like Netflix and Hulu and Google and YouTube. It's just, it, it's, a good, it's a good survey of the industry. So if, you, if you've got a friend you've been trying to get up to speed on stuff, send them this link from All Things D. We'll have it in the show notes at twit.tv slash fr. Well, I would like to get to the slipstream, but Brian... What? Have you run into Squarespace.com yet? Squarespace? Yeah. Oh, no, the rock band? They're yeah. awesome. No, no, I'm talking about the website. No, they're fusion hip-hop death metal. Uh, 
No. Yeah, they cover hip to be square. It's yeah, no, no it's great. No, the I, Squarespace is is a, the faster and easy way to create a high quality website, blog, or online portfolio. Well, I think they, they have. They probably have a website. I mean, most successful. Well, they probably created it on Squarespace.com. I don't know. See, these guys, they're not very tech savvy. They would know an H from a T from an L. No, that's probably. I think they probably did it on Squarespace if they if they even exist because Squarespace is the easy way. You don't have to know any code. You could take advantage of HTML5 and CSS3 and JavaScript and JSON, but you don't have to know anything about it. You, it's, it's all what you see is what you it's get. It's so easy, like idiot musicians are able to work with it. And I'm not calling musicians idiots. I am. When I say this, but yes. <laughs> what about magicians? Can magicians use it? Even magicians can use Squarespace and make a beautiful website. That's Even amazing. Even authors, writers, they don't... They don't know anything about what things look like. It's all huh. in their heads. All they know is words. That's all they need to this, know. Is this one of those like systems where it's like it only really works on, on one kind of browser, and then like the website won't load? It looks weird when it's on a mobile device. No, actually, that's the brilliance of the new Squarespace. It resizes your images and resizes all the customized templates so that everything looks perfect, no matter what size of screen. Yeah, they, they charge you every time you make a change or something, right? No. No, you, once you pay your monthly amount, it's, in fact, there's $16 oh, see, a I mean, month It's got to be a billion dollars. What? $16 a month for unlimited. Unlimited? Unlimited. The, the only way they could possibly do that is to have, like, you know, so, such weak servers that as soon as five people try to load the page at once, it goes down. No, that's the whole point, is unlike trying to do it yourself, you don't run into that because it's fast, it's reliable, and they have 24-7 support. Oh, my gosh. What, here's the thing. I'm going to give you 10% off for trying it. What? Yeah. That's amazing. All you got to do is visit Squarespace.com, 10% off your first payment. Whether you pay monthly, you get 10% off the first month. If you pay yearly, you get 10% off the first year. They give you a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Use this code, Brian, remember this code? Yes. Frame rate 10. Frame rate 10? Right. What a coincidence. That's the name of our show. And and the the number number of of the month. month. I know. Frame rate 10. Squarespace.com. We thank them for their support of tech... uh, Oh, 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 oh. (laughs) Of frame rate. Of technology in general. I'm doing that on purpose now. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> hey, everyone, the chat room's all going, drink. Drink. <laughs> Time for the slipstream. <laughs> ah, Hulu Plus is coming to Windows 8, and Windows 8's coming Friday, October 26th. So you you'll excited get about a the Windows 8? tiled version of Hulu. I am excited about Windows 8. I'm nervous. I like my start button. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, th- I, think it, I think it's cool. I can't wait to try it out and see if... My concerns will be alleviated because a lot of people who've been living in the beta say, you know, after you, get, after you use it for a month, it's like you've been using it all your life. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And so they uh, now, when it says it's more tilified, is that do you think that's marching orders from Windows saying everything must be tiles, or do you think it's a case where Hulu wants to steal think, some of that heat? I think what Hulu says is, look, we want to look good in the tile interface, and we want to look good on tablets. Uh, we want people watching us on tablets that run Windows 8, so we're going to make a version that s- does snap view, one touch access to shows from the start screen, works within the system. We want to, we want to, we don't want a person to have an excuse not to use Hulu, and I think that's smart. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, second screen you can't not watch is this. the title of this article. You know how we, I, I particularly am like second screen, pff, who needs it? But Bravo has started uh, a new program that will go along with their shows like Watch What Happens Live called Play Live. Viewers will see polls, contests, and other interactive games and graphics that pop up on screen throughout the show, and they'll be able to participate in real time by their web browser, and on-screen results will change based on the viewer's input. You know what this is? This is bringing a more... Uh, internet-like experience to television watching. This is this is more like uh, this. This would be perfect if NSFW show was on uh, was on Bravo. Which, yeah. by the way, I can now announce we're a part of Bravo. Oh, congratulations! Uh, is that true? Is, uh, no, it's entirely not. Oh, I didn't stop me from announcing it. Never though. mind. Uh, well, it's you know that's. But the I tell you, if you're going to bring a second a screen, <laughs> the second screen experience has to be fundamental and part uh, of the integrated experience. It needs to be. It can't be supplemental. And everyone's playing it like a supplemental thing. It's got to be actually part of it and i think this is a smart way for them to do it yeah this is better i mean we did exactly this at tech tv with a company called gold pocket oh you're bitter about this on x play no I'm, I'm actually not bitter in this case i am sometimes bitter about <laughs> it uh, but with x play and with unscrewed with martin Sargent, we did exactly this but it was really clunky mm-hmm. you had to be on a desktop pc it worked on laptops but a lot of people didn't have laptops uh you had so you had to be watching the television and watching your screen at the same time now with tablets 
And the ability to just, you know, have a, have a, a nice ultra light laptop or a tablet in your lap while you're watching, it's, it's so much more convenient to try something like this. And they're doing what we were after, which is like have content that actually complements and adds to the broadcast that's up there, whether you're involved or not, so that you get something out of it, even if you're not playing along, and right. then are more encouraged to be like, Maybe I will play along. I, I, I would like to vote in that poll. Well, Ex- other than these other apps, which are like, we're going to force stuff up at you and make you want to. And it's like, well, I don't want that. Lead me from that screen to this screen, and I think you have a better chance. Can you imagine an app for a talk show uh, or wh- whatever kind of show it is where people are able to real-time uh, – Type in much the way our chat room does, but say a witty comment, uh, and then there's sort of a feed. Everyone can upvote and downvote stuff, and then when a critical mass is hit, boom, that quote just shows up right there on screen. So essentially, you have you know whether whether you're doing it to be kind of a jokey heckle vision type thing, or if you're doing it to uh, make you know important points. But the idea that all of a sudden the, the audience becomes the writers. I mean, first of all, this is obviously yeah. how a lot of the twit programming works. So we're predisposed to think in this way, but to see that on television, I think would be exceptional. Yeah. Yeah, and congratulations on leaving Twit to uh, go to Bravo. Oh no, it's it's uh, it's very. I, actually, you know what? I've changed. I I just got an agent uh, call, and I I've, I didn't take the deal. Oh, did you have Selenir, the implant um, that allows you to yes. take calls without? Yes, the beat? I, it's it's Lionear is yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Yes, this is going to start with questions and answers about New York Housewives because it's on Bravo. Uh, so not the most er- most earth shattering use. But what I what I like is that they, if they're doing it right. They'll pay attention to what stuff catches the idea of the audience and do exactly what you're saying. Let them contribute and change and mold the show. And I think that's very smart. Uh, YouTube, letting nonprofits draw your interest without telethons. I read this article three times and couldn't make heads or tails about it. And I ended up just deciding that I guess... I guess it's what the picture shows. Are you looking at a picture? There's some kind of <laughs> non, non-profit scroll thing. Scroll up, scroll, scroll up, scroll yeah. up there. Okay. So what it does is instead of interrupting you with like, we'll get back to this episode of Upstairs, Downstairs, but we want to tell you about our pledge drive, you're going to just put an overlay on okay. there and say, hey, you know what? We're, if we get this many views, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us. So spread the word. Or, hey, we're taking donations at this link. You know what? If you, if you, if you donate to the show, it's, we're going to be able to do another season. It's, it's a way of kind of saying, hey, help this charity out it's without a, interrupting the programming. So, so it's, it's just a banner ad. It's just a banner ad that says, please let other people watch this more. It's a more interactive banner ad, but yeah. It's a, it's right. a, it's a, it's a rising thermometer of number of people. Charities like, can uh, get more donations and YouTube views, uh, and, and it had to be a charity. I have to be a cherry and you, a pickle. You have to be a pickle cherry. You can't have your ultra or, high pickles or a cherry pickle. without cherries. You can't cherry pick which your videos. pickles. Your pickles. <laughs> Let me on. No, I think it's, uh, yes, it's a banner ad that's like well designed for cherries. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Aereo, uh, streaming service, adding support for major web browsers. That's just a, a mention, but if you're uh, in New York City and you're taking advantage of Aereo, uh, you, you're probably, uh, you know, waiting for it to move beyond Apple TV and, and Roku, and, and now it has. Uh, you, you can actually uh, use it in all the major browsers. Now, are we still uh, convinced that Aereo is going to... I guess they're still hashing it out yeah, in the legal fine, system yeah, right court, now. So they're doing but fine meanwhile, right but they're now. making money. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, ultraviolet, uh, Hollywood's attempt to tie physical media to movie downloads. It's an article on uh, Red, The Register. It uh, has 5 million members but it can't get people to sign off on the format, uh, the, the universal format. Uh, this is the common file format. It's known as CFF. Uh, and they want that to become the universal format for video, which, great, we, we want that. We want a universal format. We want the MP3 of videos. So yes, you, yes. So you, when you know when you get a video, it's going to play everywhere. They're not getting people to sign off on this because everybody wants a little bit of a different spin. So they're playing in the ultraviolet universe, but they're all, not all using CFF. Well, and they, I get the I get the impression that they're all posing for a big uh, "we're in this together" photo with knives held right behind their backs. I mean, I don't yeah. I don't trust any of them because they all have their own apps, and they're all like, "Yeah, we're part of ultraviolet. Only our ultraviolet videos work in our app," and that undermines the only advantage. The whole point. To this. Right. If we're gonna put up with DRM, right? And if and if the guys at DECE say, "Look, I know it's DRM, but we're gonna make it work so you don't know it exists," and if I'm like, "Okay, we right. do that," it has to work across platforms, no matter who I bought my video from. Right. Uh, so all that hard work that's being done 
to make the common file format work and make the DRM work seamlessly is for naught if everybody doesn't implement it. Well, and keep in mind that this also is taking a long time at a time when, when these players uh, need to move fast uh, because if every moment that they don't get everyone on the same page is a moment that people become more accustomed to pirating and getting stuff over uh, BitTorrent. And uh, I, it, the longer it goes, the more socially legitimate these, these piracies will be and uh, the more trouble it's going to be. I, I'm not too worried about that, though, because it, does, it seems to be going the other way. It seems to be that uh, infringing uses or unauthorized uses are less and less acceptable. Mm -hmm. That that you know, there's there's still plenty of people out there who who champion it, but overall, people are like, yeah, I don't really like to pirate. I you know, I want to try to find the right way. And as there are more Hulu's and Netflixes and Apple iTunes, there are more ways to do that. And people, are, so I feel like the trend is against that. But you want to get there faster, right? Right. You're not well, going to get there fast if you're not all cooperating. Well, and actually, this does tie into uh, to one of our other stories that uh, we'll talk about in Tube Tops. All right. Let's uh, finish up uh, Slipstream then real quickly. Uh, Love Film will now let users log in with their Amazon info. Just just for you Love Film users in the UK. Amazon owns Love Film. It's a Netflix competitor. It was always weird that you couldn't, you know, combine those two. Now you can. Way to go, Tom. Now we're going to get all those emails from the United States citizens saying you're always bragging about Love Film in the UK. What about <laughs> us Americans? We don't have any Love Film. You know what we have? What? Pond 5. Oh, my God. Uh, Pond 5 is the best thing ever. And it's convenient, too, because I'm uh, working on my space opera. It's a, oh, yeah? It's You're a, doing a space opera? Well, yeah. yeah uh, it's What's a, it about? Well, it's, it's a reimagining of uh, the, the mockumentary Best in Show, uh, but with... Uh, uh, so you got dogs? Ducks. You got ducks. Ducks. Okay. Space ducks. So you got space ducks. Space ducks. Coast to um, coast. Yeah, <laughs> space ducks. As a matter of fact, we're uh, trying to like. Well, and that's the problem, man. It's like I don't have any ducks, and oh. obviously there's going to be a lot of. Well, and, you, and you don't want PETA on your duck. <laughs> so, so what you need to do? No, I don't want PETA on my duck. Is you go to Pond Five? They got ducks like crazy. Not not a single duck will be harmed, and you can show them. Going around, walking around, swimming around with their Wait. little ducklings behind them. So, so, like, I could key out that green water that they're swimming on right now sure. and put a space field back in, and then I'd have my space and ducks. And you'd have space ducks, like that. Wow. Boom. Look, I know many of the folks in the audience are media makers, people involved in making blogs, websites, videos, films, etc. Uh, as you know, one of the best ways to bring your production to the next level is high-quality creative resources. That's what Pond5 is all about. I know this because... My wife uses Pond5 all the time in her job. What? When she's, when, she's create, when she's producing video, they need some stock video. And it's like, well, we can't just go to the internet and pull it off because she works for a big company and they, they might get a takedown. They might get noticed. Somebody might go after them. So they go to Pond5 and you get royalty-free stock images. You pay for it. You can use it in almost any legal place that you want. Photos, you know, vector actually, illustrations, music tracks, sound effects, motion graphics, ducks. Oh, listen. Listen, space. We're in space, the saga of space ducks being shown at light speed. From quacks to quarks. <laughs> that's that's the name of it. Space. I feel it. Are you feeling it? Uh, pretty much anything you can imagine. Go to Pond5, P-O-N-D, number 5, dot com. Check it out. Pond5 has a special offer for our audience members, ducks or otherwise. 25% off your purchase this month when you use the coupon code TWIT. 25, T W I T 2 5. That's pond5.com. Use the code TWIT25, and we thank Pond5 for their support of frame rate. Don't forget my favorite part, which is they'll, they'll sell your footage too. That's right. It's a two way street. That's right. If yeah. you're like, well, I, don't, I actually make that kind of you're stuff, like, so like, Pond5's like, not for me, put your stuff on there. I live and you'll on get a duck industry. farm. Yeah. I got for, nothing but ducks. I'll sell you ducks all day it's long. Like, what the duck? Yeah. It's neither feast nor fowl. What? Tube tops. <laughs> Uh, can Boxy reinvent cable TV with the help of a TV antenna? So asks Neelai Patel in his article about The Verge, uh, talking about a new Boxy box that is meant for the average consumer. The old Boxy box was kind of that, you know, hacker mentality. It was running the XBMC code. It had the tilted, you know, on its side kind of jaunty angle. Now it's very got, punk rock. Now, now it's got a day job. You've got a cloud-based DVR for fifteen dollars a month, 
Uh, so that cloud-based DVR lets you play multiple shows simultaneously on your PC, your phone, your tablet. You can even start a recording and watch it live from your phone with a slight delay. And eventually you'll be able to buy another boxy TV and have those two tuners record to the cloud as well. So you have to have a good solid internet connection for this. But essentially, you get unlimited recording space, in theory. Right. Uh, and you can watch the things you record anywhere you are. Much, much more versatility. So it's not just Slingbox. It's got, it's got a little bit of that. It's not just a DVR. It's got a little bit of that. It's not just simple TV. It's, got a, it's trying to take it all together. Uh, and uh, Abner Ronan, who we've had on the show before, says, I compare it to moving from film cameras to digital cameras. You don't need to think about it. You want six seasons of Seinfeld? Go for it. The vagaries of copyright law mean that Boxy has to upload and store an individual copy of each show to the cloud for each user, but Abner's not worried about that. He says the cost of storage is going down all the time. So this is weird. It's, uh, I think this is a smart play on their, on their device, because what they've done is they've taken a device that had a reputation for being something useful for pirates to be able to watch obscure file formats that they grab off of BitTorrent, uh, and instead they're going... F- it seems like what they're going for is much closer to what you and I have asked for. I just want a simple, universal interface that's just going to let me find. I don't want to know where it's coming from. I just want it to be there and available. But as you said, there's so many little things that it grabs from so many different things. And there's a little bit of kludginess because it's like you get two tuners. But if you want to record up to six shows at the same time, then you got to get three of these units and work them all together. And I, I don't know what it is. And I'm really curious to just try using the device, because if they do this right, I don't even need to know how to describe or to what category it is. It just becomes, oh, it's the boxy box. It's the magic black box that lets me see whatever, I, however I want. Well, and, that, and that's the key is the interface is, is, is they're good, and we'll need to try it, but they claim it's really easy to find what you want to watch. You don't have to go through some long list that's ordered by when things were recorded. Right. You, get, you get more of a list that's like, here was by genre, here is by title. And, and so theoretically... You could record everything you get over the air, because it comes with an antenna, right? Right. So all of the -the over-the-air broadcasts that you can receive, you could just record them all the time. Right. And then just see, like, okay, what do I got? Now, your your bandwidth connection is going to limit you there, A, because you just may not have a lot of bandwidth and you want to save it for other things, and you may have a data cap. Right. Um, Okay. Yes. You're in? Yes. All right, good. I, I at least want to see it. I mean, I, w- I want to try it, and it's like, I, I want whatever box allows me to remain as dumb as possible and as TV watching as possible. Well, that's what he says. It's a babysitter test, right? Can you hand this thing over to the babysitter and give a couple of simple instructions, and the babysitter's able to use it and, and show uh, television to your kid? And he says, yes, this passes the babysitter test. Well, then I'm way excited Which, to see frankly, it. Which, frankly, the Logitech Harmony remote, as much as I absolutely love it, does not pass the babysitter really? test. Really? Oh, no, I guess so, because if you, if, if, like, you hold it in the wrong spot and it hits some of the devices and not the, the others. Because the natural, everybody who's come over and, and house sat or just wanted to use our TV... Says, so, oh, okay, I get it. Watch TV, and it turns all the TV things on. Watch TV, and they put it right down. Yes. And I was like, no, 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 you have to hold it, because yes. it's still turning things on. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Simple TV is shipping now. Uh, I haven't Woo-hoo. got mine yet, but it's supposedly on its way. Uh, we talk about it a lot, so just, just a quick, brief recap. It's over-the-air DVR. Uh, you pay a little bit a month for a guide. Unless you backed them on Kickstarter, then you get a year free for the guide. Uh, and you watch it through your Roku. So the key here for me is I can have this in the front room where I get the best reception but access and do the DVR, but still access it on the Roku in the back room. Yeah, I, I didn't. I guess I hadn't put it together when we read the description before, but when I was reading the article just now, it says, yeah, you don't actually hook this up to your television. You just use everything else just, to access it. It gets it over the, over the air. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it, it, it doesn't go to your television. It's pretty crazy. All right. Let's move on to film now. I feel like we've done this story maybe a dozen times. Uh, Never but, gets old, Tom. But Major Network old. does cool thing on TV, can't post video later because rights are different on the Internet than they are on the air. Yeah, and then on top of that, uh, the fact that everyone else is, like, this thing is still a viral hit. This sketch is being seen left and right. Wait, no, that can't be possible because NBC can't legally post it. So right. no one can watch it. Well, and, and that's the weird, like, double standard because I'm betting that it's up on YouTube right now. And I bet that there's banner <laughs> ads to the left, the right, and all around it. What we're talking about, Saturday Night Live did a sketch on Pandora, which apparently is hilarious. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it either. But Pandora is a hilarious as service. part of the Pandora sketch, it was an intern was singing the songs people were requesting because Pandora's service was down. Right. And because he's singing actual songs, which NBC has a blanket right 
to play. Uh, they, they pay ASCAP BMI fees. Right. They could do that on NBC. However, they could not post this onto Hulu without getting the rights to stream the music on Hulu. Uh, it's just or it's, online it's at It's a all. perfectly sensible policy, Tom. Yeah. I can imagine no way that the consumer's losing out on this. And there certainly isn't somewhere online where this is already available or was earlier and it was taken down. It's a game of whack-a-mole. You're, you'll be able to find it, but yeah. you just have to keep looking around. Uh, Marvel unveiled the Iron Man 3 teaser trailer. Yeah, no, okay, this is... I'm just utterly fascinated by this new event. This is a... It's, it's a trailer for a trailer, which is so weird. It's all of 17 seconds long. Oh, so we can... Can we... <laughs> yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead and run it. Keep it small, though. Jeez. Because, you know, when we give them free publicity, we won't, don't want them to get mad and take it down. Yeah. And then and this is the world trailer premiere. <laughs> so the, so it's I not, mean, this is they're saying this Tuesday, go game. to apple.com slash trailers to see the trailer that has some of the things in this trailer in it. That's but exactly right. That's exactly right. Sorry. And okay, now I don't know which is weirder, that like this whole phenomenon of a trailer for a trailer or the fact that I still get excited about trailers for trailers. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's all advertising, too. <laughs> That's the other thing. Let's check in on the movie draft. Ugh. Oh, look at this. What? Brand new win of movie draft stuff. What? Thank hate, you, hate, hate Bad Design. Yep, Hate Bad Design. That looks that amazing. Crazy good. That was awesome. I know. All right. Uh, I wish that the draft was going as awesome. For oh, me. okay. Um, well, I mean, first of all, you. Oh, I don't know if you can hear the cackling sounds of Father Robert Balasser in the background, who's leading the way. Right now, what is this? You're uh, out of juice, what Father is this Robert. Amount? You got nothing. You're sitting on 147 million, and that's 147. what do you got? What do you got left? You got Django Unchained and the the guilt trip. Sinister. Uh, Sinister is still making Django's money. Django's good off leash. I have to say. Sinister, unfortunately for me, uh, is pulled in almost as much money at this point. I mean, it's got uh, a week or two on Paranormal Activity, but Paranormal Activity definitely underperformed for what I had expected. Because last year, that was a huge, huge win for Justin uh, grabbing that one. But, you know, I don't know. We got another week leading up to Halloween. Maybe Paranormal Activity. Well, Robert's got Silent Hill, too. That's, that's, yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I'll tell you what. And Hotel Transylvania is getting it. He pointed out to me today. Hotel Transylvania getting another Another boost. bump for Halloween. Oh, you jerk. Mm. Uh, okay, so here's where I'm at right now. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Tom. You definitely, definitely are going to win the movie draft. You said that last, you said this past summer, and I, I got trounced by freaking Justin Robert Young, and the whole time I thought I was going to get beat by Sarah Lane. Yeah, wow. Sarah Lane did not, did not come through last time uh, during the summer. But uh, for me, it's uh, it's all up to Cloud, Cloud Atlas because Looper and Paranormal Activity 4 didn't, either, neither of them did as well. I knew they were wild cards, but they didn't, they didn't break out. If, uh, if Cloud Atlas does not surprise everyone and be a big deal, then, then I'm pretty much screwed. By the way, Here Comes the Boom, which we were laughing about last week, yes. is now the number four on money made per dollar spent. I only spent $8 on it. Uh, huh? And I've made over $2 million, almost $3 million per dollar spent. And it will still make a few dollars more over bad. the next couple, couple I mean, of weeks. Look, it's no, okay. Alex Cross did but, not open very well, 11.7 million, but Hotel that's Trans- better than Here Comes the Boom. Hotel Transylvania made $10 for every uh, dollar spent. Oh, yeah, no, million. Hotel Transylvania, crazy overperforming. But Alex Cross, Here Comes the Boom, I paid appropriately for it. That's the key. Hmm. Uh, now, as long as my later movie, uh, Rise of the Guardians, does well, and The Hobbit will do well, yeah. I, I'm, oh, no. I'm sitting pretty. Yeah, look, uh, Rise of the Garden is going to do $150 million, uh, and Hobbit's going to do at least $300 million. Now, this weekend, Silent Hill, Revelation 3D, Father Robert's movie, Cloud Atlas, your movie. What do you, what do you need from Cloud Atlas, Brian? Uh, Cloud Atlas has to, has to open at number one and uh, has to do uh, at least a $30 million weekend. I think, you can, I think you can get a $30 million weekend easy. Yeah, but it's also got to be it's got to be a surprise phenomenon that just it's, it's gets got word good, of mouth. Good tomatoes, which is good. Does it? They showed the trailer before Argo. I saw Argo this weekend. All right. Uh, which and and it didn't like you know the audience didn't erupt in applause or anything, but you know it was a good trailer. People were like, oh that looks interesting. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, I don't know. I I can't wait to see Cloud Atlas actually. Personally. I uh, I got the book. I'm gonna, I read I'm the gonna book. Listen to it. I read the book and. I have a totally different response to the trailer now that I know what's going on than I did before, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't, I'm, I'm kind of wondering maybe I 
shouldn't have done that. But What's, uh, Justin and I talked about this on NSFW. Always, always see the movie first and then read the book because all the book does is give you more of whatever it is you loved from mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah. Uh, the other way is always leaves you uh, uh, unsatisfied. All right, uh, let's talk about what we're watching. <laughs> Watching. You gotta figure out a different way to intro it because if I'm gonna say what we're watching in the in the, the graphic, then it's just oh yeah. yeah. With the things we are looking at, and yeah. then it'll say what we're watching. What's coming up next, Jason? And then what we're watching? <laughs> sure, we, we can pretend like Let's we don't talk know what's about next. The photons that hit our eyes this week. <laughs> what we're watching? Uh, you want to go first? Oh, well, okay, yes. First of all, uh, we're going to talk Walking Dead, I assume, right? We will do a spoiler zone on Walking Dead. Okay, so all spoiler right. zone, expect that. Uh, and Jason, go ahead and I put a link there in the doc for you. I, I, I got an email from uh, Alexis, uh, I forget how to pronounce the last name, uh, Ayala, Alexis Ayala. He, uh, you might remember I talked about his Kickstarter for a series called The Uncanny Valley, which I'm really digging. I enjoyed this one, too. He uh, does a whole thing about... Um, you know, why we like to scare ourselves and why zombies in particular seem to be so enduring and, you know, where, where it came from. Because, you know, they, they don't even call them zombies in the original Night of the Living Dead. They call them ghouls, but yeah. something about zombies just resonates with people and uh, uh, some good interviews. It's, uh, it reminds me a lot of um, kind of like Radiolab, uh, but with visual medium. It's, uh, it's, it's well shot and, and nice, tight, small stories told. And uh, he deserves a lot more views. Uh, so check it out. The Definitely. Uncanny Valley. That looks great. And I'm a, you know, I'm also one of those people who fascinated with zombies, like everybody else. <laughs> uh, awesome. I saw Argo, as I just mentioned. Now, what is that one about? I don't even it know. It is the story of a CIA operation to extract six uh, U.S. diplomatic personnel from Tehran oh. during the hostage crisis. They were not being held in the embassy. They weren't part of the hostages. They were the the Iranians didn't know they were there. They were hiding out in the Canadian embassy. This is Ben Affleck's movie. So Ben Affleck plays the CIA agent who goes there under the cover of wanting to shoot a movie. He says, "I'm a Canadian movie producer and I want to shoot a movie in Tehran," and he's able to smuggle them out of the country. And this is based on a true Spoiler. story. Yeah, it's a spoil. It's a true story. You're allowed. You're allowed to spoil on those. On a true story, yeah. really? Yeah. Soylent awesome. Green is a true story. It's, 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 People. It's, okay, that's uh, a real yeah, spoil. Yeah, it's it's based yeah. on a true story, and and they. They definitely stray from the truth of the story here and there for, for dramatic effect. The police are chasing the plane down the runway at the very end. That didn't happen at all. Right. Uh, but mostly, the, the story is true. And, and these six people were in the Canadian embassy. They were hiding out, and they did pretend to be a movie company producing a movie called Argo, which is named after the joke, knock, knock. Who's there? Argo. Argo who? Argo, F yourself. What, really? And it sounds better in the original pun uh, when you can actually say the word. But yeah, it's, and they say it in the movie like three or four times. Uh, so the, it's it's well well shot, well constructed, great story. Uh, even though you know what's happening, I mean, there at one point, Eileen and I look at each other like they do make it out, right? Like it's that it's that good at the tension. Oh, that's uh, great. So directed by Ben Affleck as well. Directed and starring uh, Ben Affleck, and you totally forget he's Ben Affleck. Yeah. Like, you don't sit there going, like, here's Ben Affleck with a mustache on. Right. Like, he, he is Ben Affleck, obviously, but he does a good job in the acting. Well, and I've heard that they do a good job of uh, setting it as a period piece, but not, you know, uh, blast up oh, telephone. That's, I should Do you need to take that? I should just, I'll turn this off. Or just, <laughs> at least oh, I have the hey, loudest, your phone, your phone's most ringing. annoying ring possible. Hey. <laughs> uh, uh, you were saying? I'm, I'm ready to move on to feedback. Mendes? <laughs> you got other stuff you're watching, though. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm still watching Fringe, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think it was John David or somebody on Twitter uh, was calling me out for watching uh, Downton Abbey over VPN, uh, and he's like, come on, it's like a fake ID. I, and I think when you talk about your ethical situations, yeah. this, is, this is an ethical situation because there's no law against it. Wait, we talked about this with Sherlock. Right. Yeah. There's no law against it. And it's actually, I'm watching commercials. So I'm generating revenue. Wait, wait, wait first of all, like, where are you watching it? On uh, ITV.com. On, okay. Because I, we decided... Sherlock was on, is on the BBC. Exactly. Totally different which is paid situation. For with, with, yeah, right? which is me mooching off of their access fees. So, and ITV you, actually gets a little money from the access fees, so that complicates matters. Right. But it, they're a commercial organization. They play commercials in the stream. Those commercials count. Yep. Uh, so you're generating revenue. And if I wait and watch it on PBS... 
You will not be watching. I will not be generating revenue. Arguably, I'll be generating ratings for PBS, which they can use to justify their existence. Yeah, 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 but yeah. But that's, that's much more indirect. Such a mess. So here's your ethical dilemma. Okay. If you do this and you send money to PBS as a donation. That's way weird. <laughs> that's way weird because then you're not, you're not even using PBS. I mean, I guess, I guess ethically. You're it's... saying, look, PBS, I know I undermine your ratings maybe a little bit. So I'm going to make, make, make you whole. See, that's, that's kind of like the equivalent of going and seeing a concert and uh, buying, you know, pay. It's like, well, I pirated your album and I loved it so but much. But you're not pirating. I'm, yeah. You're, I'm using, I use VPN for security reasons. Sure. On Wi-Fi. Yeah. It also has the side effect that if you're logged into a particular server, certain things stream that wouldn't stream otherwise. That's true. It's, it, the problem is that geolocation isn't perfect on the Internet. Yes. You can't really tell where somebody is. Right. Uh, and so but, they're, and they're pretending also, you can. Like, I mean, I guess really, I mean, what can what can the content provider do outside of say, you know, put some kind of disclaimer that says, if you're not actually in the UK, we you shouldn't be watching this, or we would they prefer do. you not to watch this. On the BBC, they do that. Okay. If you try to watch a BBC uh, clip, it will say you need to have paid your license fees and be a resident of the United Kingdom to watch this video. Okay. But they don't say that on ITV. But is it illegal? It's not illegal. It's probably illegal with the BBC. I don't think it's illegal with ITV. But you, how can you make something illegal? Like, like are your eyes committing a crime well, by it, looking at something? How is it illegal to have a, watch a television in the, B, in, the, in the UK without having paid your television license fee? Well, it's still over, illegal. Over, yeah, go over to a friend's house or, or no, you stand I mean, outside a... If you have a television in your house yeah. and you're watching it and you haven't paid your fee, you're breaking the law. Okay, wait. So are so you the allowed, are you the allowed to not pay your fee and then just... just Promise that you're not going to watch television? Yes. Can you have it? It's just weird. It's all weird. I, although, basically, if you have a television in your house, they're like, you got it. Yeah, it. sure. Yeah. But then, but then, like, do, do you need to, let's say you go to your friend's house every Thursday night. Is it, uh, is no, it illegal? No, somebody's paid the fee on the television. On the television. Know. Okay, yeah. so it's like, it's like per seat licensing I think, versus. I'm probably getting some of this wrong, so the UK listeners will, will write in and correct just, me. But... Just set fire to this whole stupid industry. I know. Just, just destroy it but it, nuke it for more it is one of those things where like he was calling me out he's like look you're always trying to do the right thing and promote legal options and i'm and i'm like yeah i am and in this case i don't think i'm breaking the law am i circumventing the intention of the commercial entity yes yeah but and and what is the harm of that i, I, don't, I don't uh so yeah i maybe i should stop doing it no but Dude. it's not against the law and by stop doing it, you mean stop talking about it on free Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> Let's move on to feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people ta- chiming in on our flippant attitude about clear qualm. And the more of these stories that we see, kind of the echoes of, of what the boxy. We, you, I think you and I took the fact that uh, and of course the story is is that now they can they can encrypt the clear qualm for basic cable. Uh, but I think you and I both saw the part that says, uh, but don't worry, like Boxy's still able to work around it. And we assumed that that meant that okay, there's some kind of framework that people are going to be able to work around, and it'll still effectively be uh, open source to stimulate uh, devices and experiments like Boxy. But we got a lot of uh, interesting feedback from the viewers who disagreed, and uh, one of them sent it by audio. This is from CJ on the clear qualm. You should be upset that Cablevision is killing ClearCam. This is part of the dirty deal that Boxy was fighting against, which resulted in cable cards sticking around, with the promise of a possible new ham-fisted half-measure of ETDA. The FCC declined to place fran-style obligations, insisting on good faith. Now, cable card sucks. The industry's past behavior has warranted anything but good faith. So you're saying to me, settle for cable card. Hold my breath for the industry that hamstrung cable card in the first place to provide me with a viable alternative? Thanks. I'll probably be dead. Enjoying frame rate from the afterlife. <laughs> Thank you, ghost of CJ. Uh, yeah, uh, no, he's he's absolutely right in the short term. I think I'm more dismissive of it because I'm like, this is this is a dead game. Yeah, right. This is this is this arguing is like, over horse buggies. This is like them saying you're not allowed to run an extension from your phone line and split it off and run two phones off of it. Uh, I'm against that in principle, sure, but do I care? No, because I use I use a mobile phone and Skype. Right. Uh, and so I, I'm looking at it from that perspective of like, hey, I wish we didn't need a regulatory agency to come in and, le- and mandate that something be available for free because we don't have enough competition in the marketplace. But B, we're, we're not going to be using that wall for, for cable anyway. It's going to be coming over the Internet. Yeah. 
votes eventually. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, we also got an email from George Hopp who says to frame rate, I'm surprised you two have not talked about the web series Halo 4 for, uh, forward on to dawn yet. It's uh, just aired. It's third episode on Friday. Great visuals, superb acting. It's good even if you're not a fan of Halo and are just fans of good sci-fi. You can see it on Halo Waypoint app on the Xbox or their website or the Machinima's Prime uh, on YouTube. Anyway, I love the show, and I love to know what you think of it. Uh, I, I watched about uh, two or three minutes of the first episode, and enough to see it, it really is very good quality. And uh, I'm, I'm more of a PC gamer, so I've never had a whole lot of love for the Halo story uh, as a console video game. But, uh, but it looks like it looks as good as Battlestar Galactica does good from stuff. a visual perspective. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Love that. Uh, finally, Brandon says, I am an avid user of Google TV, the Logitech Review, just like me. In the past, I used it with DirecTV, but I cut the cord about 10 months ago. Oh, I did that with the, in the room where the Google TV is. Are you me? Anyway, he says, <laughs> using the Google TV and my computer has gotten me by, and I have loved the experience. Now that the baseball playoffs are going on and Fox is carrying half-ish of the games, I finally got around to hooking up my over-the-air antenna to my TV. Issue is, I cannot hook the antenna to the Logitech Review due to it does not have a coax input. So I have to view either over the air on the Google TV or on different inputs. Do either of you know of any inexpensive way to get over the air antenna coax output to HDMI so I can connect it with my Google TV? You researched this all? You got No, you no, gotta there's, a, there's a reason you're answering yeah. this one. <laughs> well, I didn't know that this question was in here. I didn't look at it uh, beforehand. And I'm, I'm assuming, yes, that you can actually uh, buy a converter box. It's not going to be cheap. I, I'm thinking it's probably going to be, you know, 40 bucks or so. Uh, but you can buy a converter box that would take an over-the-air signal and convert it to HDMI. Uh, however, uh, HDMI has the HDCP thing, so I'm not sure how easy that's going to be. Chat room is saying buy a boxy box and a live TV dongle. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. You can buy a simple TV, too. I mean, there's, 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 lots, solutions. there's lots of other solutions. But as far as, like, just going straight from over-the-air to coax, uh, yeah, I think there are solutions. Probably... Going if, if you can't go direct from coax to HDMI, you could probably go coax to component to HDMI. Uh, Huge. Yeah. And our, yeah, you know what? You're gonna buy. You're gonna want a tuner. I'm assuming that there's a tuner in the TV, but the tuner you would have to have the coax too. You're right. So you're gonna have to buy a tuner. That's gonna be like 80 bucks. So at that point, you might as well buy a boxy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we are going to do a Spoiler Zone review of The Walking Dead. If you do not want to be spoiled, yank the headphones out of your music player right now. Stop the car. Press stop. Don't listen anymore because we're going to talk about The Walking Dead episode and spoil everything. Those of you who are not sticking around, thanks for watching. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash fr. You can watch us live on Mondays at live.twit.tv at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can email us. Email address right down there Frame on the right. video. So imagine I'm pointing at the words frame rate at twit.tv. About to jump is. into the spoiler zone. Here we go. Silent breathe is people! Wow. And wow. And wow. And wow, 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 wow. Yes. Wow. Okay, so a few things to say. I mean, more than anything, these past two episodes... It felt like the comic book. It felt like the heart of everything I loved about the comic book. It's like they're going back in time. I am as excited about the third season as I ever was for the first season. I cannot believe they won me back after how annoyed I was with that whole second season. Who got beat up in the writer's room? I, I, I don't know. And, and, and what's, what like Newt Rockney like speech was given to say, listen, you guys, enough Farting around yes. at a house. Yes. This next season, we're going to kill zombies. Yes. And people are going to die. And there's going to be guns pointed at people and unexpected killings because that's what makes this show interesting. Yes. We already are good at the character development. We're already good at the really relationship tension. Don't pour more into that. Give me zombie deaths. There was this definitely a slow clap at the end of it, too. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. It was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Giving him the standing belly clap. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, first of all, I love how fat the pacing is phenomenal. They're they're getting things done and stuff matters. Um, the characters are believable. Uh, I love the nods that they gave to. Uh, 
all of the stuff that happened in the comic book that I cared about showed up in some. Yeah, I mean, some you've story. got Herschel instead of Dale, right? Right, right. And, right. and you've got uh, Herschel's da- other daughter instead of the the young uh, girl. Sophia. Sophia, right? Uh, and they're and they're not one for one replacements, but yes. the overall dynamic seems to be about the same. Well, and it seems also like they're taking threads of. I mean, they're so much more harder. The fact that they were able to jump, uh, you know, like six months in the future, and they're able to just convey that they're able to make these brutal decisions. And that, you know what's really smart about that? Is we're, we're fans who are like, okay, season two is really hard to get through. You gotta help me out of here. And it's really smart to go, okay, forget everything. We're jumping forward six months and yes. these people are now really hard up and we're not gonna spend a lot of time showing you how they got jaded and how right. they got where they are. They just did and they're zombies, so you believe it. Right, right. And keep in mind, like they're still the protagonists and we want to associate with them. We've watched their journey. So even though we're seeing a much harder Rick, like we might not like this Rick if we saw him right at the outset at the beginning of the show. But because we've seen him get to this place and he's making these hard decisions, like that moment when uh, uh when uh, wait, what his wife's Lori? That's mm-hmm. Yeah. When Lori, when Lori is just sort of like uh, leaning over like, uh, hey, uh, if there's a, you know, there's some killing that needs to happen. I you do know, it with a clear you, conscience. You do what you have to do. You got me. I mean, uh, Big boy. And, well, and, and their relationship going uh, cold and icy like that moment at, at the end um, and uh, and watching. Uh, I, I forget the name of the new character with uh, uh, the short gray hair, the chick who's. Wanting, wanting to practice the, the series. The, the Apprentice Doctor. <laughs> the Apprentice. Well, and that's the weird part, man. It's like I'm back to where I am Carol. in the comic. Carol, that's right. Uh, I'm Thank back you, to Duel. where I am in the comic where I can't predict anything because we have characters who who never should have been there to begin with, uh, you know, by the canon of the comic book yeah. and other characters who have been eliminated. Uh, it's just great. I mean, I'm, I'm so thrilled. In, in fact, I would say if you've never seen The Walking Dead, you could probably jump right in with uh, right here at season three. I would watch the pilot yep. to get the backstory yep. and then jump right to th- season three. I think I'd, I, I would prescribe the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. D- who do you think's in the bushes? Is, is it Michonne? Uh, I don't know. I didn't even think about that. Uh, is there somebody watching? Well, I, I don't think it is Michonne because Michonne and uh, Andrea are over in, and it looks like next week's well, episode. Next week they're going to be with the governor. Yeah, yeah. And, I'll, and I'll bet, I'll bet that we don't see any of our camp that because we did because we didn't see any of them this time. Exactly, yeah. and I think that'll be fun. We'll we'll watch. We'll see this uh, this alternate. I love watching these these brewing factions and this. Well, you know what? This whole episode. This is they they do this in Lost a couple times. This whole episode uh, took place without seeing Michonne or the governor or that that area at all. Uh, and ended up at a certain place that had a, something peeking through the bushes watching her practice surgery. Mm-hmm. My guess is this next episode is taking place over that exact same time period, but it's telling Michonne and Andrea's uh, story, and it ends up with us seeing who's peeking through from the bushes, and it may be somebody from the governor's camp. That's interesting. I would have thought uh, it would be starting with the report. I, I just assumed it was some sentry from their camp. Like now, like the, the big news will be, some scout comes back. But there's a line in the preview that says, tell me where they are and I'll help you. Which yeah. implies that he doesn't know where they are. Okay. But that sentry might not have got back yet. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Merle? Uh, I mean, Could it be Merle? What's that? Rooker's character? Uh, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah, because we, be. yeah, he was and he was teased in the uh, the trailer for next week. At the very end, you see him for a split second. Michael Epping Rooker. Yep. It's going to be awesome to have him back. Well, he's going to be back. Maybe he's in the another. in the bushes. So tell me, did you? Uh, I assume you watched it DVR'd after the fact, or did you watch it live? No, because I was watching the baseball game, so we watched it afterwards. Okay, so uh, it is astonishing to me to see how hard AMC is working to trick me into watching commercials because I watched a DVR and I had no reason to stay up as late as I did because I had a flight in less than four hours that I had to get to, but I stayed up that extra hour. Uh, and I found myself like three times on three commercial breaks letting the commercials go. It's, it, it's almost as though they're programming their commercials to have visual engaging pops in the first 10 seconds of the first one, like it's a lead in, like the first commercial has got to be good enough to suck you in. And then you end up maybe watching another two and then you realize I'm watching commercials and then you jump ahead. Yeah. But they also did something way w- different. It, they're also doing this, uh, giving you three different code words uh, throughout the commercial breaks for you to even apply for the contest. Doesn't work on me, but exactly. I'm sure it works on some people. Yeah, it doesn't work on me either. But you know, it did work on me that I thought was fascinating. As you bleep through, uh, there's all of a sudden 
like 10 seconds of just a title card that says, says Gail Ann Hurd, blah, blah, blah. And it was all trivia. It was a full screen showed for far too short of an amount of time for that. anyone to actual, actually read. It was all this behind the scenes trivia talking about one of the people working on the show. And so by seeing it, you, you it was clearly there. I didn't see that at all. To get you to go back and pause and, and, well, and read it. We were fast forwarding. Yeah, you know, it, it, we weren't skipping. It was, we it, were was, it, was, it was so short that, uh, uh, that, that, very well. that you, you might have missed it. But I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, tell me something in the chat room. I didn't make this up, did I? Did anyone else no, see No, I believe it was there. I just, I, I, like, well, or I was wondering if it was covered by a local avail. I was watching it on Direct. Were you watching it on Direct TV? No, I was watching it on Time Warner. On Time Warner, so maybe it's a little different in the breaks. We'll know. see if we can find it. But it was, yeah. it was really interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, they hit down all cylinders. Well done, Walking Dead. What's, what did you just say? I said they are hitting on all cylinders. Oh, that's a car metaphor, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Got it. Gotcha. Is it? Uh, it's a car metaphor? Yeah. The cylinders like oh, in I a V8? I thought it was like mathematics, like geometry. Just, okay. Good old, <laughs> good old, good old basic cylinders. They solids. were measuring a cylindrical volume. <laughs> Accurately. It was, it was pi r squared over times over length over. of the cylinder, man. Yeah. It was amazing. Over and over. <laughs> wow, they're accurate. They're <laughs> metaphors. Nobody's right. nobody's backing up my claim about this thing. I believe you. We'll that it was see. there. I just didn't. I, I just didn't notice it. Well, is that it for our spoilers? I, I think, think it is. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time on Frame Rate. I love you. Bye bye. Miss you. Drive safely. Kiss. No, you hang up first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs>